Well, here's a flashback. In the summer of 1971, Newfoundland and Labrador had the highest unemployment rate in the country. The CBC's Cam Cathcart traveled across the province to hear how people were coping and what prospects were on the horizon. We dipped into the Here and Now archives to bring you this story from nearly 50 years ago. Bo Waters, symbol of stability and job security in Newfoundland for the past 46 years. But by the end of next month, its workforce will be reduced by 30%, and the glow of Corner Brook's prosperity will pale. The reason given is a depleted newsprint market. It's the same story at Grand Falls, where Price Newfoundland plans a 10-day closure of its mill in late December. In both communities, dependent on one major industry, the impact of layoffs hasn't been fully realized. But the effects of one industry economics have clearly left a scar of despair and bleakness on Bell Island, not far from St. John's. Five years ago, the mining company pulled out, and the people who remain collect welfare or commute to a few jobs in town. In St. John's Harbor, the activity has slowed as well. At the CN Dockyard, up to 30 men have been laid off because of a drop-off in the workload. In the Commons, the opposition has charged mismanagement. While evidence points to a steadily depleting fishery, it remains Newfoundland's greatest seasonal employer. But in Fermuz, roughly 60 miles south of St. John's, the problem isn't a lack of fish. It's an apparent refusal by a majority of the employees to work 12 months of the year. The plant now has to close. The conservative leader in Newfoundland, Frank Moores, wants a realignment of thinking on the subject in Canada's most chronically affected province. What we are going to try to do uh, as soon as possible is to uh, get involved in that type of winter works program where we can uh, create some employment at least. Now this could be uh, sawmill operations which can carry out in the winter, uh, cutting and so on, uh, boat building, this sort of thing. I think we've got to bring in some pretty immediate steps to try to alleviate as best as possible uh, the unemployment situation. But it is still going to be severe. Uh, I disagree with Mr. Benson, unfortunately. I wish I could agree with him that the uh, economy is going to become more buoyant. Uh, I think not. With the American surtax, particularly uh, with the overall state of the Canadian economy, uh, with the federal government's attitude towards unemployment, or what has been to date, uh, I think the Atlantic provinces, and Newfoundland in particular, are, are basically are in for a comparatively ru a rough winter. And uh, we'll be bringing legislative programs that will help to alleviate it. Uh, there's no way in the length of time we have that we can bring in a program that's going to cure it. It would be, it would be wrong to say so. Uh, it would be political, and, and it's too serious to be political about it. But that section of the economy showing the greatest improvement this year has been construction. It's booming. With a soaring population in St. John's, housing has jumped ahead, along with school and hospital construction. But registering highest in unemployment, lowest in standard of living, and the highest in the cost of living Newfoundland still depends on Ottawa to pump in more than half of its revenues. And the provincial debt is now over $1 billion. In this province, the weather, unemployment, and politicians are most talked about. All are unsettled. Cam Cathcart, CBC News, St. John's.